Hey guys, um, I just had an idea as I walked out here for a quick video that I thought I should do. Um, we had this cold yesterday, it was yesterday, maybe the day before, and a lot of my stuff survived and just ate it right up, didn't have a problem. And I think a lot of it had to do with microclimates, how we've protected a lot of things, uh, certain methods that I've used. Some site selection on the property has been a big part of it. Uh, you'll notice, I'm going to walk around real quick, do about 10 minutes, and you'll notice how uh, there's some stuff that is just completely toasted on one part of the property and other parts of the property it's not. Like right here, this is an Inga Edulis uh, ice cream bean. I planted this one, We ha it hadn't seen a frost yet, so um, this grew pretty big this year, like did really, really well. And it's supposed to be a tropical tree, it's supposed to not really be able to take cold, but it's out here, I didn't touch it, and it's fine. It is kind of in this little cavern. Um, it's not fully shaded, really. I mean, it gets a lot of sun, but it's uh, it's in all these oaks, and they kind of seem to hold a lot of heat. Uh, the nursery's up here, if anyone's been here. Um, you know where the plants are, they're up front here. This area gets really, just stays really warm. Things that are super, super susceptible, like the pumpkins right there, there's, they're gone. The vines aren't gone, but the, you know, the leaves are mush and that's fine. Whatever, they'll come back or they won't. I'll plant another seed. But up here in this area, I've got a couple of trees that I would expect to be completely toasted in any kind of coal. Right here is a Balimbi and it's, it's not dead. It's still holding leaves. Like it's, it still has new growth right there on top. Like it's, it's not as happy as it could be in the summertime, but that tree should be dead. This little area right here seems to hold a lot of heat. Um, this whole front area seems to hold a lot of heat. If you notice these banana trees, they got a little singed, just to the tips, but they're certainly gonna continue and they'll support that fruit. They'll finish that fruit as long as this <laughs> 28 degrees doesn't get us. Um, but nothing up here is really gonna be affected by it too much. Um, there's some Catalu amaranth got got popped but like the lettuces the sorrel all this wintertime crops they don't care at all they're not affected by it here is a wax jambu also up in this area where you would you know this part of our climate you would expect this to get destroyed but it sat through 31 degrees and it's fine now we've got our red banana took a little damage but it's still got green these leaves did not turn to mush but look right here Goldfinger, 15 feet away, everything's brown. Right over there, that's Orinoco, completely trashed the small leaves. So there's, uh, there's definitely areas, depending on how the winds come in, how your trees are set up, um, methods that you've used. Now right here, I've got a flowering mango. It's an Edwards, it only has a little bit of flower on it, but it didn't lose any leaves. It didn't, I mean, there's new growth. It did not have a problem. Now I have this smashed tight up against a big patch of Mexican sunflower. And right here, I had a burn barrel burning all night long. So right here, I've got my big red hog plum, which is perfectly fine. The tips got singed by the cold, but it's fine. Right here, I have septilla also. Completely fine, didn't drop any leaves. I put this barrel right in between all three trees so I keep them going. Over here is a greenhouse. I have a lot of mangoes stuffed in there because like 40 or 50 of them. Um, but then what we're gonna see, I'm gonna run back here. Oh, check out the cauliflower. So cool. Mm. That is the best cauliflower. That's uh, purple Sicily. I just harvested this whole row and ate it all and now the uh, side shoots come in. Now here we go. Montingia Calabura, the Jamaican cherry, strawberry tree. Out in the freezing cold weather, it still has buds on it. These trees freeze in 31 degrees, 32 degrees. But look where it is. It's right here and I've got cover. Trees, all of this is holding in temperature and keeping it from being a windy mess. If you're out in the wide open, you're gonna be a windy mess and the wind chill just kills everything. 
There's a long end. Right there. Doing great. Everything's happy. Now a big greenhouse, of course, I don't have to worry about anything in here. I've got a lot of room. I've got all kinds of happy plants in here. Sour sops, just growing away, happy as could be. So, this is a little extreme, you know, who does this? But, um, as we get back here, this is my colder area on the property. But back here, again, I have a whole bunch of subtropical and tropical stuff in there. And they're surrounded by trees, it insulates, it keeps everything warm. None of these trees have any problems. These are cold hardy, you know, but there's bananas in my cold spot. Completely toasted. The stalks are fine, you know. The stalks aren't going to collapse or melt or anything unless they freeze solid. But the leaves are going to turn brown now. Now they can't collect up any sun. There's no more photosynthesis. Those bananas are now in suspended animation. They're never going to do anything. They're not going to get bigger. Um... I'm going to harvest them. I'll let them sit. Probably going to take a few months. They'll ripen eventually, but there won't be anything to them. So, it's just what it is. I'll probably pull that entire clump out of there because it's just not a good spot to grow bananas. It's too cold back here. All the cassava got bopped. All the leaves froze off. But it's a good time to do it because it's time to dig all of that cassava and start over. So, that's not a bad thing. Um, more bananas back here in the... Icy, icy cold part of our yard. So I've been really careful about what I put back here. Um, tomatoes did not fare so well, but I didn't cover them either because we had too many other things to worry about. Um, I think these will be fine. I think they'll grow through. I'm just going to trim off all these leaves and let them grow back. Um, but I don't. Nothing really melted. What you're looking after a freeze. If these stems are still hard and solid, this plant's going to be fine. I think this one's going to die. You see the coloring looks a little off it's kind of feeling i don't know not so hot i think that one's going to go um this one's probably going to go also i'm not liking the look of this but all the others i think are going to be fine so no, that one's going to go you can tell by the color but this one even <laughs> might pull through uh but i didn't cover these and i'm going to cover them because we're getting a lot more cold in the next couple days but right here we've got a pomegranate this is much more cold hardy um cedar bay cherry there's another pomegranate another cedar bay now right here we got cherry of the rio grande considered to be a tropical plant but actually uh what a buddy of mine mina was telling me that they actually do better if they get a little a little smack of cold at some point um, these are completely unexposed and they are happy this is my coldest area because it is my lowest area on the property and that's a big high hill up there all the heat's up top the cold settles down in here you can feel it coming just pounding down off the top of that that hill so i have to be careful with what i put here now this banana patch um they're not going to finish anything but the nice thing is there's no flowers on there so all of these are fine as long as these stalks didn't hit the ground and they will turn themselves to applesauce if they get frozen so you don't even have to do anything there's no cutting down trees just leave them alone what I'm gonna do now is all these trees are gonna all these leaves are gonna fall and they're gonna collapse right up close to the to the stalks of these plants leave them alone because that's just gonna help heat, keep heat in and protect the stalks these guys are not ready to throw a flower so in the springtime, when they wake back up, they'll just continue right on where they left off and push flowers and finish fruit. I will get, I'll have no problem with this cluster. This has been one of my most productive mats. Um, I do need to thin it a little bit. There's a lot of plants in there. Um, but it's a good time to do it because whatever I leave will pick up and roll when it gets warm. Um, back here, I've got some avocado trees that have proven to be able to take quite a beating. Um, I honestly don't remember what variety that is that came in without a tag. Uh, possibly a day. Um, here we've got Monroe and Marcus Pumpkin. Both of these, they just, they just get it done. Hardy down to 26 degrees, I think, or 28 degrees. Neither one of these trees care about any kind of cold. I put six avocados back here last year, and I was left with three. Three of them just couldn't hack it. 
So, but then we just put this day in right here. Uh, but I'm just watching how uh, my property affects stuff. Here's a peanut butter fruit tree. This is shown to be a pretty tough tree. This didn't take much damage. This will be fine. My little variegated guava under here. Got a little bit of sizzle on the tips, but he will be fine. Um, blackberries, blueberries, even jabuticaba right here. This is a sober jabuticaba. Doing fine. Didn't not care at all about 31 degrees and that hard wind coming down off the hill. <clears throat> so I highly encourage you to look at your property, decide where to put things and how to put things based on direction, based on elevation. Um, like it, any mango tree that I put right here will be completely dead anywhere in this area back here. But there's a mango tree. If there's actually another one, there's a lemon zest up there. Also looks happy as could be. In the right spot, I had a burn barrel next to it just to maintain the ambient temperature in that area just high enough, just, just enough that it's going to keep that temperature above its freezing point. And uh, now we're looking at some super cold hardy. This is Rajapuri. I see a little damage, but these leaves are green. This tree is fine. I mean, it just pushed a new leaf. This is going to be fine. Rajapuri is a is a battler. Uh, Ginberry laughed at it, doesn't care. Uh, the blue javas, it took a little sizzle, but they're also going to be fine. Look at this one. Here's a little blue java, cooked, and still pushing leaves. Tough, tough, tough plants. Um, praying hands did well. Kandarian even did pretty well. These are going to be fine. They all have fruit, but they'll all finish. Uh, unless that 28 degrees <laughs> in a few weeks takes care of, or I think it's next weekend. His, uh, I think these are dwarf calf, and they're still holding green. But again, now we're talking about being stuffed up in here in this corner. It's a lot more foresty and tighter and holding a lot more moisture in, a lot more humidity. It holds the heat. The water holds the heat way better than the air does. So um, there's a catly guava, looks amazing. This big papaya, teeniest, teeniest bit of damage in there on the tip. But this one is tucked in here. Anything out in the open is going to get toasted. So think about how to manipulate that. How do we work that? I use Mexican sunflower. Um, Jay Reynolds down in, in um, Boquilia on, on Big Pine. Uh, um, he is using bananas. He was using those Orinocos and tighten them up. Now they don't get the coal we get, but it does help plants just create a little something. It's like people having friends. You need some friends to lean on can't stick a person out in the middle of a field and expect them to thrive it's I, I just i always relate plants to people i always get good results doing that it just, just seems to make sense uh, papaya back here tucked up now we're back up here in the front i wanted to show you this mango tree um, i didn't cover i didn't do anything um, i've smoked a lot of mangoes on this property pumpkins got whacked but look at my lemon zest happy as clam about to push new growth completely unaffected by the ice but burn barrel and there's a giant june plum i just put that in this year it's already got fruit on it but no leaf loss everything's good this was this is a monster i filled these barrels up to about here about to the second ring with just chunks of wood and stuff we had nice fires going the bottom and then we went to bed I think we rolled them out here at like one or two o'clock in the morning. So it was a little bit extreme, but uh, got it done. I, I get the mangoes through, that's the game. Uh, all the cool, crazy subtropicals. Get them through, get them through these couple of days of frost and we win. Then we get an entire season of growth, a whole season of fruit production. It's a uh, it's pretty exciting time. Springtime is real cool when you can get your trees through the winter. Uh, so little bit of creative uh, planting and I think we can grow just about anything we want here um, just gotta got to adjust move things around stop killing mangoes out in the open give them a, a place to stay safe until they're big enough to support themselves and then you can cut all that stuff out of the way and allow them to go because then they'll be big enough to take a little bit of heat um, these bananas back here do always do pretty well. They have the protection of the lop house. So we've 
we've got fruit hanging still. We ate half of those the other day, as tostones. Um, but the Namwa right here sat right here in 31 degrees. This is what everyone thinks is blue java. Uh, they call it ice cream banana. Those are going to be a real nice rack. Those are going to be good fruits. But um, if you have bought blue java, you probably have ice cream banana. And that's what you got. You have a good banana. You have a real cold, hearty banana. So um, don't worry about what it's called. It's good fruit. So I hope someone gets something out of that. I think uh, I think it's uh, been a really, really good season for dealing with the cold. I've made some adjustments this year, and I have really good results. So pretty excited to start planting a lot more mangoes. I'm going to put a ton of mangoes in the ground now because this worked. Um, I got next weekend. I got to try again. I got to be ready. Got to be stay vigilant on, on what I'm doing. But clearly that worked. It's still holding flowers, and it went through 31 degrees. So, big victory. All right, everyone. I got to go mud some drywall. Have a good day. Protect your plants. We got another week coming next weekend, Saturday, Sunday. So, see you guys.